precious lamb, heaven's bridegroom, my dearest one, son of God, son of man, my beloved friend, my heart is on. Good evening, Jesus Image. How are we doing tonight? Are you guys happy this evening? Are you guys happy this evening? Oh, isn't Jesus amazing? Come on, let's just give him our attention. Jesus, you are as close as the mention of your name. Jesus. Jesus, we adore you. The name that is above all names, high and lifted up. There is no name that men can be saved by but you. Jesus, we worship you, we adore you. Come on, just put him on your lips, just thank him. Just begin to worship him. What are you thankful for? Jesus, thank you. 
You are holy.
You're holy, you're holy.
Oh!
He's wonderful. 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 He's wonderful.
bless the Lord. Come on, lift your voice. Jesus. Come on, lift your voice. Oh, Lord, we love you. We need to just wait in his presence here for a little while. I just want you to quiet your bodies. And um, let's just give the Lord space here to do what he wants to do. Just wait here in his presence for a moment. We welcome you, wonderful Holy Spirit. You're here already. But we want you to know in our hearts that we long for you to move and do what you'd like to do tonight in us touch us deeply have your way
special uh, divine encounter uh, really that took place on this platform and uh, we'll have some time to talk to you about that uh, next week but I just want us just all close our eyes and steady our hearts the Lord is very very near tonight And I believe that is an invitation from the Lord to us as a church family to join with heaven and sing along, sing the song of heaven, to worship Jesus. We give you all the glory, Lord, all of it. Jesus. It's a very broken heart, a broken soul to my left in the far left section. A very broken woman. A very tormented woman. Tormented by the lies of the devil. Tormented by her past. Jesus is here to restore you tonight. In that far, that far left section, the far left seating, this area here. Jesus is here to restore you tonight. release you from that torment. And you don't need me to touch you. You need the Lord to touch you. And he wants to. Be completely free tonight. May that weight just come right off you. In the name of Jesus. Hey, Lily, come up here, would you? Okay, give her a mic. Thank you. I just want you to pray. Jess, would you come up? I 
If I were you, I would just get lost in his presence right now. Just pray there, Lily. Jesus, we sense your presence tonight, God. We come yielded, hungry vessels for you. Show us your stillness tonight, God. Your perfect peace wash over us tonight, God. Amen. Any anxiety or fear just cover it in your peace, Jesus. You're the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Father, for everything you're going to do tonight, Jesus, for realigning us, God. Realigning those who've been off the path, God, back into your will, Jesus. And once we step in, that's when you bring the peace. So we bring you our lives, Jesus. Cut away the branches that are fruitful and that are unfruitful so you can grow us, God, in your perfect will. Yes, Lord. We just want to yield to you. We don't want to strive, we want to yield. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord, we love you. We say amen to every word of that prayer. And we receive it. the name above every single name, the greatest name in heaven, the greatest name on earth and under the earth, the name of Jesus, the Lord our salvation. Thank you. Thank you for being so near in Jesus' name. Amen. What I'd like us to do tonight is just come forward to go back to your seats I'd like to dismiss the choir as well and the musicians and go go very aware of the Lord back to your, your seat I want to keep this flow I don't want distraction to rob us of what the Lord wants to do so get back to your seat and limit limit the movement once you do What I'd like to do tonight is, uh, I think what I'd like to do tonight is get touched by God. It's a good idea, isn't it? Thank you, Lord. You know, many services are tests from the Lord. And uh, we need to pass them. Especially when a, a day is a thousand years. You don't want the Lord to wait another day. So come our way, Lord, and trust us. Stay with us. How beautiful. Esther, would you come? I think what I'd like to do is receive tonight's offering and then completely get out of the way and have a Good old-fashioned Holy Spirit service that will embarrass many of you. Does that sound good? Yes. Esther, it's all yours.
open in prayer. It's always a good place to start. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness, God. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your peace that passes all understanding, God. Thank you for your salvation, God. Thank you that you are our faith, Jesus. You are our cornerstone. You are everything, Jesus. Thank you that you are here and we have come to worship you. Would you receive all glory and honor today, Jesus? We fix our eyes on you, Jesus. We want to see you above everything, even above our own needs, God. We want to see you. I pray that we would get lost tonight, Jesus, in all of you, Jesus. In your name we pray. I have the last two days, I've just been hearing this phrase over and over again, that we would see the reward more than the sacrifice, that we would see Jesus more. And I just wanted to read First Chronicles 16, starting in 23, and it says, Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are his, his place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name and bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. And so today we just have the opportunity to worship him. And I just, I pray that we see the reward more than the sacrifice and let us do it with joy and with our hearts postured truly in a place of worship. So Jesus, we just come before you. We thank you that you were the great sacrifice, that you gave everything for us. So today, God, we hold nothing back. I pray that you would lay on many hearts, God, what you have them to bring tonight, not just even their tithes, but their offerings, God, not even just their offerings, but I pray that they would surrender tonight, God, everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So if you would like to give, you guys are invited to raise your hands and usher can find you. Those watching online, you guys are welcome to give as well. You can text the number on your screen. Moses stood on a mountain. Waiting for you to pass by. You put your hand over his face So in your presence he would die And all of his so the glory And it shone called us to boldly see your face. Show me your face, Lord. Show in this 
David knew there was something more than the ark of your presence in a manger Messiah was born among kings and peasants And all of Israel saw the glory, and it shines down through the age. Now you've called me to boldly see your face, wash us your face. Show me your face, Lord. Show me your face. And then gird up my legs that I might stand in this world. Just see your face. Oh, show us your face. Oh, show me your face. stand please let's just lift our hands to the Lord wonderful Lord you've been so good to us so wonderful and gracious so faithful how you've touched our lives and our families and our bodies 
been so generous. You've given us your own son. And so help us tonight offer pleasing worship. Teach us to be in your presence. Teach us how to live here, both individually and as a family. Teach us. And I do thank you, Lord, for the years ahead, for the unveiled glory of the Lord. Come and rest with us. Show us your ways that we might know you and please you. Magnify Jesus tonight, wonderful Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can be seated. I can ask you tonight to respond to the unique um, nature of the night. Just to avoid distraction and avoid movement, please. Take your Bibles to Exodus 33. I had no intention on preaching tonight, but I I felt the Lord give me this scripture today. Lord, Let your word pierce us and light a fire inside of us. We honor you and honor your word. We are hungry and ready to receive in Jesus' name. The people said, We're going to begin at verse 7. But before we do, I just want you to mark that. It's not a long chapter, but there's so much here. You know, I see so many of you here in in the room tonight and Many familiar faces and so many new faces. If you're here for the very first time tonight, would you lift your hand? Wow, unbelievable. Welcome. (laughs) Honored to have you. How many of you came from outside of the state of Florida to be here? What an honor. Honor. Would you stand up, please, if you came from outside the state of Florida? Wow, honored to have you. Welcome. So it's a great privilege to have you here. You came on a very tame tonight. Well, most of our students are still on spring break. So excuse our predictability. <laughs> That's a joke. When I think of people coming in, how many of you came from outside of the U.S. to, to be here? Where did you come from? Poland. Welcome. Welcome. God bless you. Anyone? Yeah. Yeah, up there. Chile. Chile. Where? Canada. Welcome. Sorry? Chile too. Wow. Uh, Somebody else here? Yeah? Venezuela. Guys, this is amazing. Uh, Yeah, up there in the balcony. Toronto, Canada. Canada. Yeah. Maryland. Maryland. (laughs) Uh, Okay. (laughs) Amen. Yes. Russia. Welcome. Anybody down here? Or oh, yes, up in the balcony. Ecuador. Wow. Here. Wow, welcome. Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome. Anybody in this section from outside the US you came here? Oh, here in the middle section. Yes, where did you come from? Where? Ukraine. I love the Slavic community. 
You're a sleeping giant. Yes, where did you come from? Spain. Spain. Wow. Well, we want to welcome all of you who've paid a price to get into the room. And I don't mean admission at the door. We don't do that. But I mean, you have sacrificed to come into God's presence, and that's very humbling. Hopefully our team feels the weight of that. Uh, that's not normal. It's a, it's a great privilege. And as you've heard me quote Bill so many times, but he so marked me in my days there and still does. You've heard him say it's a great tragedy when people come to Reading to meet Jesus and all they meet is Bethel. Right? And the same would apply here. It would be a great tragedy if people came here to meet with the Lord and they just met us. I mean, you're, you're, you, you are all wonderful. But Jesus is much more wonderful. I began to think about um, the type of heart that the Lord loves and the type of heart posture that moves him, almost makes you impossible to not be touched by God. And I don't ever want to lose the heart that many of you have walked in with, which is I will do anything and go anywhere to be with the Lord. And it's, it's the ones who take the lowest place in God's presence that the Lord begins to trust. I remember uh, when I was living in Reading, actually, a friend of mine came through to minister in Reading, and I just didn't want to go to church that night for anything. And, uh, of course, he called me that afternoon. I had no plans on going, and he's like, bro, can you please come and just support me? And I was like, oh, my gosh. I've heard you preach two million times. I know everything you're going to say. And I know when you're going to say it. I could probably say it before you say it. I've heard your testimony so many times, I'm going to fall over and die. <laughs> but the moment uh, you're too uh, experienced to receive is the moment the Lord stops trusting you. You know, and so I went, and of course he started praying for people and asked for help in the melee. And I, I did help, and it was it was it was an honor to do it. And a year later, I was there at the pulpit preaching, and the Lord reminded me, "I trusted you to take the pulpit tonight because I could trust you to sit and receive." That heart is, is precious to the Lord. I'm not saying my heart is perfect. Only the Lord knows it. But there's a, a tenacity and a hunger that the Lord just doesn't despise or reject. I remember... Uh, I used to, and I, well, unfortunately, many have gone home to be with the Lord. Most of them have. But I used to love to fly anywhere to go sit with fathers and mothers in their house and ask them questions about Jesus. So I would go fly out west to sit with Joy, or um, I would drive to Vero when Reinhard lived there to go be with him. And then he moved down to Palm Beach, and I'd go there very often consistently and it's actually reading the other day a prophetic word that he gave me I, I write these in my bible this was uh, March the 14th 2011 when I heard your story in your heart to reach Orlando back then I felt to start little meetings called Jesus Meetings. Our first one had 100 people at the Crown Plaza. 
It felt like a stadium. <laughs> he said, when I heard your story and your heart to reach Orlando and the cities of the world, I felt chills on my body. This is Reinhardt speaking. Lord, anoint Michael with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let your fire hit Orlando and from there spread to the cities of the world through what you will do. Bring in a great harvest, Lord. Make Michael a mouthpiece to the nations. Use him mightily. <clears throat> There's something powerful about paying the price to be in position to hear and receive. And I don't want us to ever lose that. You can hide your lack of experiential presence and knowledge with ministry endeavor. If anything, we tried to hide this church from you all. That was our promotional campaign, how to hide it from you. It's quite liberating. quite freeing to watch the Lord do something. The other stuff you, you, you take to your pillow at night, and more importantly, you take it to your grave. And uh, what you can hide with crowd, crowd shots, you, you cannot hide from the eye of God. That's serious stuff. I'm glad the Lord led me on the path he led me on. It's proved every other Ishmael wrong. And I don't mean people being Ishmaels. I mean perspectives. If you could help me, just if you have your baby, if the baby's crying, we love children. If you could just in this moment, just take the baby out while the baby's crying and then just, just come back in. Thank you so much. I was more hungry for God than doing something for God. And I would just fly out to see these people, you know? I do remember my first time with Reinhardt at a Chili's in Vero Beach. I remember he got the chicken smothered in cheese and uh, bacon. And I was like... Pastor Monkey, should you be eating like that? I didn't say it because I was deathly afraid of him. <laughs> and uh, he said, oh, the crowds are not my reward. The presence of Jesus is my reward. The crowds just kind of come with it. Wow. That's liberating, isn't it? That song you just heard, Wonderful, came uh, through an encounter where L Alicia heard something very beautiful in the spirit. Well, not in the spirit, like tangibly he heard. I'll let her tell the story next week, but that's a wonderful way to do things, by the spirit. Those were wonderful days, good days. I remember my dad and I flying to Reading for the first time like kids on their way to Disneyland. And when we got there, it was about as wild as Disneyland. Hungry. I don't think the church needs to be perfect for people to get touched. It's almost some people are just so hungry. God will touch even an average church. And not to say that Bethel was in any way average then, I just, but I remember having no problem flying six hours to Sacramento and then jumping in a car and driving three. It was no problem. It's actually two hours shorter, t shorter total travel time, uh, two hours longer, I should say, than it is to go to London. But when it's for the Lord and you think he's there, you do it. Am I talking to anyone tonight? 
trying to provoke somebody. I remember sitting with Ralph Wilkerson. I'll never forget it. He couldn't hear very well. And uh, Jesse caught his wife's anointing. She's going on to be with the Lord, but she would finish all of his sentences. Jesse's taken up that mantle. <laughs> I love my wife, but that thing right there, that's the test. <laughs> oh, man. Our staff will tell you. I'm like two sentences in every staff meeting. Boom, finished by Jeff. Uh, I don't know what to do. I panic and I do the cross I just to help my soul. <laughs> I just can't deal with that one. She would do that to him. And I remember he had a parakeet. He had pictures of Catherine Kuhlman everywhere. He was a real friend to her. And he had this wall where all of his friends, all the champions of the faith, had their pictures, so it'd be like Oral, Catherine, um, oh gosh, my father-in-law was on there. He said, well, send me a picture so I can put it up there. I said, no, sir. I felt like my picture would crack and die and fall off the... <laughs> I'm not doing that. I think Mario Murillo was up there. And he would just tell me stories about the Lord. And one time I was sitting there with David Papavisi and uh, the parakeet was whatever they do, the sound they make. I, I can't remember exactly what it sounded like. But we were drinking iced tea and lemonade, I think. And he says, I can't hear very well. <laughs> he points to Aileen, his wife, and he goes, and she can't see very well. It makes a great team. I thought, how is that? He said, uh, you know, I think the Lord sent you here to open my ears. And I was like, no, he, he didn't send me to do that. <laughs> he sent me here to learn. He goes, no, no, he sent you here to open my ears. And he goes, and Catherine and Benny, they both needed a worship team. But I don't think you do. So open them in faith. And I go, What? I'm like, I kind of need a worship team too. <laughs> None of them are here. He said, stick your finger in my ears and open them. You know, it's as common as like passing the salt. So I looked at Dave, I go, you do it. <laughs> Dave goes, no, not doing it. I said, you do it. So I guess we each took an ear. And while we were doing it, he was like correcting us and telling us to have more faith and go for it. These men saw the wonders of God. They saw the Lord move and do mighty things. I would sit with him for hours and hours wanting to know the Lord. I have it recorded. I'm not, I don't even know if he knows I recorded. I'm sure he does, but I put that thing on record and put it right there on the table. Because there was this sanctity in the moment. I knew I was in the presence of the Lord. I knew it was rare. And I, I didn't want to ever forget it. And so many things he said to me still are with me. One of them was, I'll never forget this. I had him in to teach a small group in Aliso Viejo back in the day in Southern Cal. And I asked him to come in and teach and he was teaching on Pentecost, and then he was praying the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, on the group. Incredibly, I don't know if you guys have heard of a man named Mark Rutland. He was the president of Southeastern and ORU, one of the greatest preachers you'll ever hear. He was baptized in the Spirit when Pastor Ralph prayed for him. And so he, he had such a gift in getting people baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I wanted to know. And so when he came to teach for us, I had everyone stand up. He goes, sit them down. They were seated on the day of Pentecost. I go, yes, sir. <laughs> he did it publicly. Yep, yep, that's right. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> and I remember him saying, what do you feel called to? I said, I feel called to be an evangelist. This was 15 years ago. And that was my next season. I was primarily an evangelist. 
And he said, well, you better learn to be a soul winner. In other words, if you can't do it here, if you can't do it at the restaurant, if you can't do it daily life, don't try to build some ministry. If it's not really you. And then there was, uh, there was, there was Joy Dawson. You know, I, I remember flying out there to go be with Joy. and She had this thing she would do to me that was, oh man. She would put on Terry McCalman and we'd wait on the Lord for 45 minutes straight. Just She'd turn it off and say, what did he say to you? And I would go, uh... Because I knew if I said something, number one, she was going to take 50 Bible verses and make sure that it lined up with Scripture. And, uh, which was like, oh, man. And then I knew she would judge what I said, which is biblical, by the way. That hurts people today, but that's biblical church life. So uh, when I would say nothing, I thought, he didn't tell me anything. I thought that'd be the safe way out and that she'd coddle me and just love on me. And she'd say, all right, do it again. Put the track back on, 45 minutes. We did that for hours until I had something worth saying. One time I walked into her house at 11 o'clock. I had a dinner date with Jessica and her dad and the family at 9 o'clock p.m., two hours away from where Joy lived in Los Angeles. For those of you who don't know who Joy is, she's one of the foundational founding voices of YWAM and an amazing, amazing woman who's been to 55 nations of the world. And really, there'd be no Jesus image without Joy. Incredible teachings. Our students have to read her books at school on the fear of the Lord and knowing God. Uh, Intercession was a foundational teaching for Joy understanding the ways of God. You know, I would say it looks like from the looks of this crowd, 60% of you are 25 and under. There's a massive Gen Z representation here, which I thank God for. My concern for your generation is that there aren't many teachers or preachers or pastors who know the ways of God who communicate to you. There's some slick stuff, grows churches, pulls crowds, great media, great this, great that. But are there really oily, saintly fathers and mothers who are teaching you the ways of God? And I pray that many of you will become that to your generation. I was really spoiled. It was the goodness of the Lord. These were true saintly people. Not people who you were forced to honor because they had mixture off the platform and were anointed on it. These were not those kind of people. They were actually uh, more impressive to be around in private. Oh, they're out there. They're out there. And... uh, so I walked in, I said, Joy, it was 11. I drove, I left at 8.30 because if you were late, you were done. Like that wasn't happening. <laughs> if I walked in late to a Joy Dawson day, oh my, I'm not, I mean, what would have happened, babe? I'd been rebuked for 30 minutes and she would have had biblical <laughs> justification. <laughs> So I walked in at 11, woke up at eight, or left at 8.30 from Orange County, drove up there, and I said, Joy, I have a meeting at, seven, or have a meeting at 9 p.m. I have to leave at 7. I'm giving you the whole day. You'd think she'd say, well done. I'm so honored you're here that you've given me eight hours, which I thought was a big deal. Her response was, you'll be relinquishing that to the Holy Spirit, young man. <laughs> Sit down. I thought, what? (laughs) I called a friend and told him, he goes, I'm not sure I could endure that. (laughs) And I was late to dinner and she didn't apologize. Andy Bird missed a flight at LAX because Joy refused to be done with her Bible study with him. (laughs) He's like, Joy, I have to go. I'm going to miss a flight. She goes, you'll be following the Holy Spirit in this house. (laughs) No apologies. 
No apologies. No. I remember coming into this room as a little boy. Three hours each way, my mom and dad would drive us from Tarpon Springs. For what? A special service? No, just for like a Wednesday night teaching. Just for a Sunday night healing service or for the Timothy class on a Monday night. Imagine being a 12-year-old boy and begging your parents to drive you to be in God's presence. Aren't you glad he knows no age? What was it? It was the tangible presence of God. The same Holy Spirit who's in the room tonight. And I've had the honor of sharing my story with leaders who've come through. We'll sit in the back and they'll say, tell me what happened to you here. And I'll say, right where the cross is is where I got healed. But I, they said, is that why the cross is there? I said, no, the cross is there because we love the cross and it, that's where we like it. <laughs> and right over there was where I got saved. But I remember that heart, that heart posture. I remember leaving my seat over there just to come stand here to watch Pastor Benny minister over there. I wanted to be closer. Sounds extreme, huh? I wanted to learn the ways of the Lord. I wanted to know how the wind blew, why he moved a certain way and when. I was obsessed. I had to know him. Wanted to know why he did what he did. Most are amazed by outcome. Well, I've planted 30 campuses in six years. Most stop there. We have this many students at Jesus School. We've led this many people to Jesus. All that stuff. Oh, we don't impress the Lord with his own stat sheet. God forbid. It's a satanic thing to take the glory. I want to be the greatest crown caster alive. I want to deny every trophy and glory in the tree. If Jesus isn't enough to move the hearts of the people, then I just need to quit. I got nothing else to offer you. I have no mission trip to take you on. I mean, we do, but I'm not going to start a new group that the Holy Spirit's not telling us to start so that you'll feel more here. If this, that glisten, that shininess, and the air isn't enough to keep us here, then we've fallen from a great height. And that's what these people were like. They had a mystery about them. Jess will tell you, I don't know how many trips I just flew to Reading just to talk to Bill. And Bill don't talk a lot. You could fly all the way there and hear like three things. <laughs> but some stuff you don't need to hear. The most important thing you need to receive, him, his very presence. I love to talk to my mom and dad about those days, what it was like when they met the Lord, when my dad saw the Lord. What it was like as a parent to drive me here and pay such a price and go to work the next day. I remember sitting in the nosebleeds in the Crusades. And it was awesome. Knowing the Lord is everything. A 
Exodus 33, 7. Ryan, are you there, buddy? Could you read that for me? Every time, <laughs> you guys are going to laugh at this one. But when you get to a period, pause for a moment. Everybody knows that grammatically. But when people read their Bible, they go so fast, they can't interject. So start at verse 7 and be a good husband of Carla and stop at your periods. And trust me, if you don't, she has that look on her face. I'm sure she's going to make sure you do. Don't stop too long, though. Okay. Just the right amount of time. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> says, Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. Okay, wait a minute. As I've said before many times here, Moses takes his own tent. Bezalel's not employed until a few chapters later. I believe it's chapter 37. Bezalel built the tabernacle of meeting. He designed it and built it or built it according, I should say, to heaven's design. Therefore, Moses' personal dwelling became the dwelling of presence. And that's where it always begins. Personal seeking of the Lord. As long as he sought the Lord, the scripture says, the Lord caused him to prosper. That's not just speaking about money. That's speaking about a life of fullness. Keep reading, Ryan. So it was, whenever Moses went out of the tabernacle, that all the people rose, and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he gone into the tabernacle. Stop there. Imagine an entire nation of three million people standing at attention at their own tent door because one man met God. That is the population of the Orlando Metroplex. Imagine all of Orlando leaving their house and standing at their door to watch you go into God's house. This is the economy of the Spirit, the progression of God. To truly know Him and meet Him triggers a yearning and a hunger in His people. Never shortchange, never devalue the ability of God to transform millions around you because you simply met the Lord. Keep reading there, Ryan, please. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. Whoa, hold on now. Moses enters the tabernacle and the pillar of cloud descends and stands at the front door to send two messages. Only Moses can come in and I don't want Moses to go out. The Lord here is guarding the door to Moses' fellowship. You tell me it's not important to God. What does it mean to the Lord? For one man out of three million to go and be in his presence. I promise you, there wasn't a single person out of those three million when the Lord stood at the door in the cloud, in the pillar of cloud, there wasn't a single person who had the guts to run through that cloud and break through that door. The Lord became the bodyguard of Moses' prayer life. It's 
Someone in here has to get after him. It may cost you money. It may cost you flights. It may cost you hotel rooms. It may cost you food and fasting. Yeah, it will. It may cost you, cost you correction. It may cost you early mornings and late nights and 24-hour prayer vigils. I would have to say, this is my opinion, out of everything that Jesus and his team has put their hands to, the thousands that have gathered over the years, the millions that have been touched through media, glory be to God. All of it, the, I would say, I, 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 I'm gonna take a risk here, but if I were to receive a vote from our worship team and our staff, they would say, the favorite thing we've ever done together was that 24-hour prayer vigil on the church property. Something beautiful about it. Something beautiful about that costly oil. And Moses finds such a fellowship that the Lord himself, who stood in the cloud, that being the person of the Spirit, the cloud, Jesus himself, the Word, pre-incarnate, standing in the cloud, guarding the door, saying to Moses, I love it when you're in here, please don't go. And saying to the rest of Israel, don't you dare come in and distract them. Verse 10, Ryan, would you read that? All the people saw the pillar of clouds standing at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose and worshipped, each man in his tent door. Every person stood not only to walk outside their tent door, but to worship the Lord because Moses chose to worship the Lord. Do you see what God is getting after? What he's wanting? What the world is needing? Full possession, embodiment. People who carry the presence of God. There's no substitute for it. You can't do enough to hide the lack of it. Volume in our preaching can't disguise the lack of it. You either have him or you don't. Period. He's either close to you or he's not. And you're either close to him or you're not. Some are allured by the bells and whistles, but that's the shallow end of the pool and not only lasts for a little while, Typically, persecution weeds that out. Life itself, if God loves you, which he does, he will make sure to weed that out of you. He's looking for mature friends of God. Mature friends who are sensitive to his touch, you see. I told Carla during that offering song with Steph, I don't know, I'm sure we had another song planned, didn't we? We had to call an audible there because of the nature of the Lord's presence tonight. Not only whether or not he was here, but how he was moving, his pace, how he was deciding to manifest himself tonight. Well, the song had to match that. That makes sense. You, there's a knowing of the Lord in his ways and what he's doing that we must be sensitive to as a church family. The more sensitive we become, the more trusted we become. Because he's incredibly sensitive. More sensitive than we, we know. Um, there's this aspect, this nature, this characteristic of the Holy Spirit that is so gentle, so sensitive that it, in today's day and age, almost sounds religious to even talk about. We, we've in, embraced this thought process that we can be however we want to be, do whatever we want to do, regardless of how he's leading, and he'll be pleased no matter what. It's almost like we serve him a meal and say, eat it even if you don't like it. Well, these people that touched my life were different. 
Read uh, verse 11 there, Ryan. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Stop there. Oh, my. Am I boring anyone tonight? So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Like the Lord did away with the parables and the riddles and prophetic vision with Moses. He found such a relationship with Moses and Moses with him that he talked to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his very own friend. As a husband would speak to his wife and a wife to her husband, that is trust, my friends. Do you ever wonder, I remember calling Pastor Benny about this. I might have heard so many different perspectives and I completely agreed with him. We were amening each other and singing. Uh, we were worshiping all the way home. It was a Christmas night, or not the actual Christmas night, but it was some night around Christmas. Jeff loves doing the Orlando Christmas light deal. We cover the entire uh, Metroplex. It's wonderful. Not really. All right, but anyways. <laughs> And uh, I couldn't stop thinking. Jess is loving the lights, and I'm thinking about this Bible verse. It, it was therapeutic. Because, you know, you're in traffic, you see one house, you drive an hour to get to the house, you gotta turn the radio on, and there's this weird Christmas song playing. I mean, it's cool for like an hour, but when it takes your whole day, you're like, whoa. So it's just like, you know, I'm pretending to be happy, and I'm meditating on the scriptures to get through it. And I'm thinking through this amazing passage in John's gospel when the Lord Jesus stops to talk to Mary, Mary Magdalene at the tomb. And he has so much going on. Amen? It's not like Jesus didn't have much going on after his resurrection. There was an ascension ahead. He's teaching his disciples for 40 days. He's opening the scriptures to them. He had just plundered hell and conquered death, hell, and the grave as the perfect man and perfect God. With perfection, he plundered hell. Oh, I love that. Comes out of the grave. Mary is freaking out. She sees him as a gardener. That's not by accident. Now the divine gardener is back. The last Adam is back. He is not a type. The first Adam is a type. Jesus is the final say and everything else in between. And here's the last Adam, Eden itself, showing us that true pleasure is found near a cross and an empty tomb. And today, you'll only find a garden near a cross and near the empty tomb. Eden means pleasure. If you want joy, find the cross and the empty tomb. Find the wounded one, and you'll find joy unspeakable and full of glory. And she asked him, where have you put the master? Where have you put my Lord? Tell me where you've placed him, she says. I'll take him. Oh, really, Mary? Are you really going to carry him? A dead body of a grown man? Do you really have what it takes? But love, love feels first and thinks not even second. Love starts thinking way down here. Love feels first. Love is passionate before it's pragmatic and rational. She says, I'll take him. I love that. Oh, Mary, what are you going to do with him all by yourself? She didn't care. 
Give me his body. I'll love him. The city hated him. I'll love on him. And the Lord, see, this conversation continues, and finally the Lord says her name in the moment. The Lord says her name. She recognizes him because only Jesus says your name in a certain way. Right? And she cries out, Rabboni, teacher, my Lord, great Messiah, Rabbi. And she grabs a hold of him. And he says, don't cling to me. I've not yet ascended to my father. And I've heard so many perspectives on this. That somehow by her clinging to him, he might, she might taint him. Oh, I don't know about that. We're talking about the risen Christ who hung the planets. I don't think Mary's going to taint him when she gripped him initially. That's like trying to taint a lightning bolt. But with Jesse's daddy and I, as we were talking through, and he began to share his perspective, and I, it was leaping in my soul when we were talking. I'll never forget that. He said, you know what I think? I think the Lord did that out of mercy. Mary wasn't yet born again. And if Uzzah died touching the ark, <laughs> what happens when the living and true ark, wrapped in skin, comes walking your way and you decide to hold on to him? Jesus said that out of mercy, not because he was afraid of her. He is amazing. I said, he is amazing. That's what love sounds like. It's, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know? I love watching y'all jump around in here. Some of y'all in the front, y'all jump, and you can jump high a lot of you. It's pretty impressive. I used to be able to do the same thing. It's interesting watching y'all jump around after Pastor Benny comes and teaches on stillness. <laughs> but that's beautiful. It's beautiful to me because you're in love. You're not worried about your shin splints. You will when you reach 40. <laughs> or your knees. Because love doesn't, love doesn't take an inventory. And Moses here finds this relationship with God where God chooses to speak to him as a man speaketh to his friend face to face. Listen to me right now. If you would take every other goal and burn it and go after this, God will do more with your life than you ever dreamed. Did you hear what I just said to you? You listen to me right now. I don't care who is preaching what or what has been deemed as success in this generation and what it looks like to supposedly please the Lord I don't care if you, some, some people think they're apostles, it's comical. They're like 30 years old. They just started a church and they think they're apostles. I'm like, have you read what it looks like to be an apostle? It's not the, exactly the easiest life. You know what you're signing up for? Let God determine your office. It's okay if you know what God's called you to. But if you're more addicted to your office than his face... That's a problem. If you're a prophet, seek the Lord's face. If you're a pastor, be more into his face than church planting. Are you listening to me? If you're a teacher, be more into his face than your favorite teaching. If you're an evangelist, be more into his face than crowds.
face to face. Every other ambition is a lesser ambition. It's not that they're necessarily intrinsically evil. They're just not the highest pursuit. And the world has seen everything else. The Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaketh to his friend. You know, the Lord wants you to be his friend. Help me there, Joel. Why would the Lord want friends? I don't know. But he does. He does. I remember getting around a few folks. My father-in-law, Heidi, brother Yoon, the sisters. I get around them, and this thing would get into my heart, and I would say, "Oh, I gotta know him like that." It's not it had nothing to do with the assignment. They had found friendship with the Lord. And I'd sit in meetings like this and something deep in my soul would just start to get picked at by God. I could stir it up and thoughts would run through my heart like if Heidi could have him, I can have him. I mean, she makes no sense at all. She's a blonde girl from Laguna with a PhD nobody knows about and she's ministering in Mozambique. That doesn't make much sense. God's not into making sense. He's into raising the dead. You know? I'd sit in those meetings and listen to Brother Yoon, and I don't even need to listen to Brother Yoon. I just need to look at him, and he'll, I don't know what he does. He just stands with his little Bible like this and holds it straight out, which is a physical miracle. He's doing a three hour front delt raise with a Bible with a smile that lights up a room he suffered more than anyone I know yet he's filled with joy that, that tension it messes me up when I'm around those people you know one of the sisters show up with a music box to Jesus 22, an event full of Gen Z. And she didn't care. She has the audacity to take her little music box and stick a mic up to it. Completely at rest. She hasn't been tainted by the uh, preferences of Gen Z. She doesn't care if they're all wearing neon Crocs. <laughs> Slides, I'll look in some cases very ridiculous but we love them <laughs> and please don't leave here because we need your fire she stares at all y'all and takes her little music box that wasn't even a radio I don't even know where she found that <laughs> and just stuck it up there and sang along with it and everyone started weeping right Michael Miller whispered to me he goes who is this woman Sister Pena, he goes, she's from another planet. I think, he goes, I think she's visiting us. <laughs> yeah. I used to go sit with those ladies and they in my deepest pain, I'd go drive six hours to be with them. When I lived in California, I'd drive to Phoenix. and They'd hear from the Lord before I got there. I wouldn't tell them anything. And they'd put a tea out and a little cookie. And one morning, when I got there, next to the cookie was acacia. They picked acacia flowers. 
and they put that acacia right next to my tea. And I said, That's, that flower speaks of the Lord's suffering. I told them that in the scriptures. And she said, we know. We heard from the Lord that you're going through pain. We figured we'd put that little flower there next to your tea as a little sign that God hears you and that he's with you and that he is speaking to us about you. <laughs> as a man speaketh to his friend. I went and walked through that prayer garden. We'll be there in just and another one. Their, their home base will be there in a week or so in Darmstadt, Germany. Be there for the 77th anniversary of the inception of the sisterhood. And the, the garden in Phoenix, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave tonight right now. And if you have any wisdom in the spirit, I would put your seatbelt on right now. I feel the Lord moving. And uh, I went and walked into that garden. I just waited in there for hours, reading the scriptures, looking at the art in the garden, of stations of the cross and the Lord's suffering. I remember leaving the garden and I, I, I went to Sister Pinya and Sister Rebecca who's gone to heaven. And Jesse was back at the hotel with Theo. Uh, Benny hadn't been born yet. And I said, uh, Sister Pinya, I need to leave and go get Jesse and my son. And uh, she goes, oh, okay, let's pray. And I thought, about leaving? When you pull up, they sing to you. No, I'm not joking. They sing worship over you, I should say. So imagine driving up and there's these Holy Spirit-filled sisters singing the old songs over you. <laughs> it's quite the welcome. We need to up our game, choir, when we'll need you at the entrance. <laughs> Off Forest City. It's actually a good idea. Done. Okay, now... I said, oh, we're going to pray about leaving. So we did. We sat there on the bench. And before that, I'll never forget what they said to me. They said, Pastor Michael, I was in my 20s. They said, Pastor Michael, we asked the Lord all morning what to talk to you about. And he didn't talk to us. I thought, oh, great. But now they said, he's speaking to us about you. And I was sitting in a chair and I, I looked up in a tree and they pointed up and they, do you see that sparrow? And then that sparrow started singing, literally right over my head. Now we know what he's saying. He's saying, if he cares for the sparrow, will he not care for you? This sparrow who neither sows nor reaps or and gathers in barns. Will he not care for you? And then we prayed, and this is what they said to the Lord. Well, prior to that, they said this to me. They said, Mother Bessie Leah told us one day a few young people will come. And they'll come here to the sisterhood wanting to know Jesus. I'll never forget it. They looked me in the eyes and said, we believe that's happening today. And I thought, wow. The fruit of somebody who can hear God and be his friend. How it can impact a generation. So I'm about to leave. They start praying about me leaving. And they said, <laughs> as though the Lord didn't know this, they said, uh, Jesus Michael's about to leave. And I thought, I don't think he's aware of that. I don't know if <laughs> you didn't get the memo, sister, but he's all knowing and I, he knows I'm about to leave and I'm not sure he cares. And then she said, he's about to leave and go get his wife. And I thought, he knows that too. 
But see, friends speak differently, don't they? I said friends speak a little differently, don't they? Well, there's no pretension. There's nothing uh, between them and the Lord. They just have hearts that are burning. So because they're burning, they've been purified. And because they're purified, they're childlike. And because they're childlike, they're simple. And uh, then they said this. When he comes back today at 3 p.m., would you meet him again in that garden? Would you wait for him in there? I'll never forget that drive to go get Jess. I drove over there and said, hurry up, get in the car. She said, what's up? I said, Jesus is waiting in that garden. <laughs> I'll never forget walking back into that garden like, Young, young in the Lord, but hungry, starving inside. And this is what the Lord wants in us. Mm. The knowledge of the Lord. Knowing Jesus. Loving Jesus. Hearing Jesus. Feeling Jesus. Obeying Jesus. Needing Him. Talking to Him. This is purity. When Jesus' image started, the Holy Spirit said, Michael, if people leave your meetings knowing more about your ministry than Jesus, it's just proof I didn't lead the meeting. Oh, all eyes on Jesus. Would you just close your eyes? All eyes on Jesus. The Holy Spirit, I believe you're here. I believe you're moving and that you have good things planned for your people. I ask you now in Jesus' name to begin moving and touching your people in a deep way. Aaron, just go up on the platform. Ryan, you stay with me. Father, do a deep work. a deep work. Open the eyes of your people to behold the Lord. Do a deep work, Lord. Deep work. Eyes for Jesus, not for this world. people in a real way in a true way touch them eyes to see the Lord and to love him holy is the Lord worthy is his name 
Worthy is the name of Jesus. He's the only one found worthy. And let the weight of your presence rest on us. Rest on us in your beauty. In your beauty. Just don't look at me tonight. Please. Just close your eyes and worship. In your beauty. Emma, can you take your instrument? In your beauty, Lord. He doesn't need any help right now. He doesn't need any help. Reveal yourself to them. Reveal yourself to them. Shine. Shine in them and blind them to every other vision. Blind this church to every other vision. Blind their children to every other vision. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I might know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Oh, Jesus, you are our rest. You are our Sabbath that protects us from this world, that protects us from ourselves, the idols we raise up, the ministries we erect that you've not called us to. Our identities wrapped up in activity rather than you. Be our rest, be our everything, be our portion, be our beauty, be our food, be our drink, be our light. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Lord, we say, Thank you for the land and the building, but you're better than it all. We'd rather be in homes and gymnasiums and high schools with you than in that building without you. That would be a death wish. Oh, stay with us, Lord. Stay with us. Trust us with your feelings, with your heart. 
For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. And so the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you've spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. He knows us by name. And he, Moses, said, Please, oh, please show me your glory. Please show me your glory. Oh, let that cry arise in us, O oh Lord, where the hearts of this house pant. Please, 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 please. Please, Lord, please, not just show me your glory. No, please show me your glory. If I found grace in your sight, give me you. If you're moving in my life, give me you. If I have favor, I'm going to ask for you. Give me you. And then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is a place by me, Oh, what mercy. I said, what mercy. Here is a place by me. You shall stand on the rock. In other words, you shall stand on the rock of Christ Jesus, should you want to behold the Lord. And so it shall be while my glory passes by that I will hide you. I will put you in the cleft of the rock. I'll take you deeper. I'll take you in I'll pull you in I will allure you as Hosea says I will speak kindly to you there I will lure you into the wilderness my dear virgin I'll pull you close and I'll call you from the wilderness and I'll bring you to the river I'll draw you in you'll ask seek and knock the door will be opened I'll bring you in I'll pull you into the cleft of the rock and because I know what you can handle I will cover you with my hand while I pass by then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back but my face shall not be seen Lord said to Moses, cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. And I'll write on these tablets the words that were first that were on the first tablets, which you broke, so be ready in the morning. Come up in the morning. Come up in the morning. Get out of the world. Leave the camp. Leave the crowds. Come up and find me. Now come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God and present yourself to me there. Don't just show up. This is not a club. He tells us to present ourselves to him. Present yourself to me there. In other words, die there. Give me everything there. Cast your life upon me there. On the top of the mountain, and no man shall come up with you. Oh, these places are for you and Jesus alone. And let no man be seen throughout the mountain. Let neither flocks nor herds feed before that mountain. So he cut two tab tablets of stone like the first ones. And Moses rose early in the morning and went up Sinai. 
as the Lord had commanded him, and he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. And now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there. Oh, yeah. The two friends, there they are again. Moses shows up and the cloud returns. That's friendship. And proclaimed the name of the Lord. He introduces himself to his friend. And the Lord passed before him. He won't talk to you unless he himself comes, you see. He's not interested in talking to you. Without the two of you actually meeting. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Here is the Lord introducing himself to his friend, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So Moses made haste after this introduction this declaration of who the Lord is. There's only one response when the Lord shows you who he is. So Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and he worshiped. I think we should worship right now. And then he said, if now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go among us. Even though we are a stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin, listen to this, and take us as your inheritance. Take us as your inheritance. And this is our prayer, Lord, not just mine, let this flood the hearts of this church. Oh, take us. Take us as your own. Take us as your inheritance, Lord. We are your inheritance. We are your people. But we want you to dwell among us and unveil your glory. Please show us your glory. The crucified and risen Lord. I don't know another way to say this. I'm just going to say it in a very sacred moment. If you're away from the Lord, and you know it, if you've drifted, or well, you're just away from Him, or if the fire's gone out, I don't know. Get down to the altar now. Just come. If that person's praying next to you, just very politely nudge them and, and ask to get down here. You get down here. If you're on the balcony, come. Wonderful Lord. You know, I, I'm telling you, I've been in this for a long time. There's many people you think you're alive, but you are dead. And it takes moments like this to even know it. And the convicting power of the Holy Spirit comes in His grace and mercy to, to draw us, to pull us in. Don't worry. If you have to step over people, none of that matters. We're gladly inconvenienced. Come. This world is a death chamber. It is foul and putrid. Come out from among them, the scripture says. Come out. You come back to your beloved tonight. Come back. If you're with someone you know 
you know they need to be down there. I want you to boldly look them in the eye. Boldly look them in the eye and say, come on. Come. No sin too great for the broken and contrite heart. for you. Worthy are you, Lord. Worthy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. I'm just going to keep ministering to the Lord. When you feel the Lord drawing you, you just come. You come down here. You say, why? Why? Because some of you care about what people think more than what Jesus thinks. Jesus died publicly. He died publicly. That's why we confess him publicly. Worthy are you, Father. All oh, these tears are beautiful. every voice in the house. Oh, I need I need oh, thee. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour. Every hour I need thee. My one defense. My righteousness. Oh, 
God, oh God, how I need thee. Lift it a little more, every voice, I need thee. Come out and begin praying for the people that came forward. Sing that again, I need thee. Fill them. Fill them. Oh, the Lord's moving on. Fill them from head to toe. Fill them to overflowing. Be ye filled. Be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Ruth, I want you to pray for her. This young girl, uh, the Lord has good plans ahead for her. He has good plans ahead for her. Pray them in. Declare them over her. I want everyone to, to pray with me now. I'm going to give you time, just the Lord, just to linger so that the Lord can do whatever He wants to do in you tonight. But I want us to pray out loud. Yeah, they're still coming. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to pray this out loud. The Lord will hear us. And then it's after we pray, after service, it's very important that all of you, listen, that everyone who's come forward takes that pamphlet that you have because you must, listen, this is not meant to be a one-stop shop. You must find a life of discipleship in the presence and in the scriptures with God's people. So there's a, there's a booth in the lobby and this isn't to grow the church. This is to see you grow in the Lord. I'm, I am begging you. Do not walk out of here without being equipped to get a Bible, be baptized, learn to pray, learn to connect in, at a heart level with God's people in his house please you go to that information table when this is over the Lord is after making you a disciple I want us all to pray these words Holy Father you know I, I haven't begun praying yet the Lord is filling many of them with the Spirit Holy Father you are holy yet you call us 
be your own. This is amazing grace. What love you have for me. And I don't deserve it. Yet you offer yourself to me. And so here I am. Forgive my sin. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me with the blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins. Forgive my sin. I long to know you. I long to walk with you. And I declare and confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. That you, Jesus, were born of the Virgin. That you lived a perfect and holy life. That you suffered and died on that cross. That you died for my sin. Three days later, you broke the tomb open. You are alive. Jesus Christ is alive. I declare this. And I believe this. Therefore, it is my confession. And today, I repent of my sin. I leave it at this altar, at the foot of the cross. And I renounce the world. And I renounce the devil himself. And I give my full allegiance, my full heart, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you are returning again. You are seated on high as we speak. As King of kings and Lord of lords. I am yours. You are mine. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Father, you heard their prayer. Would you just lift your hands? I ask you to fill them, fill the whole house to overflowing. Show us your glory. Fill your people. Fill your people. Heal your people. Deliver your people. You're worthy of glory and honor. touching you. Then 
Team up here. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Oh Lord, my God, every voice, every voice. it a little now. I feel the Lord wanting to touch a few folks. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the sings my soul is a little now sing it again Lift it a little now, O oh Lord my God, O oh Lord my God, lift the keys a little.
stop singing. thank you for this life it's been faithful here for years humble, hungry and now Corey may the word of God break open 
before the eyes of your heart. May his word be consumed by you. And may you declare it. I pray you'd be, pray you'd be rooted and planted here for years. May the beauty of Jesus come alive to you. And may you fall in love with his word. Your hunger pulls on heaven, and it's been pulling for years. And tonight, everything changes for you. Babe, you want to come over here? Jesse. Everything changes for you. May you know his touch, walk in his path. every verse be like food and every word be like food may you be so filled to overflowing that hungry people would feast on what you say. May you be humble and lowly. And bold. And bold. And bold. And I'll eliminate all insecurity, says the Lord, as long as you stare at me. He looks throughout the entire earth to show himself strong in one. Do it in her and bless her. May you walk in the blessing of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. you lift your hands to heaven everyone father let your glory rest on your people let your presence rest on your people in our eyes on our countenance in our voice in our heart and in our motives keep us lowly make us like you keep us as the apple of your eye mighty name of Jesus, let every person who traveled to get here leave completely changed. In Jesus' name, receive all glory, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just keep playing there, guys. I'd like our prayer teams to get ready. I'll need some help from the ushers. If you need prayer tonight, our teams are here to serve you. It would be our honor to do it. Uh, for those of you who are feeling the presence of the Lord in your seats and you'd like to just sit for a while, you're more than welcome for a while just to be in the presence of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his glorious light, the beauty of his face, shine upon you. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Prayer teams. Well, Michael and Jess here. We are standing in the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. The local church, Jesus School, a House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. 
So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just wanna say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're gonna show you right now. We wanna take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10:42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. 
We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. May millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space on the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.